This game is rated M for Mature. It may contain blood and gore, intense violence, strong language, mature humor, nudity, strong sexual content, and use of drugs and alcohol. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome back to more Tokyo Babel in the last episode. Here we are inside Tokyo Babel, a gigantic structure. I'm not really sure what's all going down, you know, or the, the, you know, the specifics of it, but uh, Gethel was destroyed. But before she left, she gave us a gift, the ability to basically have all-knowing sight. We can basically see through anything, we basically know about everything when we look at it. Pretty crazy, I know. So let's continue on. As little caster gazed skyward, so did I, spotting an odd-looking creature bird perhaps flying our way into the horizon superman has come to save the day superwoman raziel that's cool whoops that's cool looking i like that whoa I found myself staring in awe at the young girl as she approached us, locks glistening in alluring gold, skin white as freshly fallen snow. She felt like a being out of this world, her beauty transcendent. In her right hand she was holding a, uh, um, what were those called again? It looked an awful like one of those thingamajigs I spotted downtown, the something pad, a, a Klingle? A portable mini computer, basically. Her most striking features were her pair of glimmering white wings. Almost like an angel's, actually. Scratch the almost part, that looked like the real deal. She surveyed us with a frigid gaze. She was certainly not a foe, but friend? That, I wasn't quite certain. Very Basojo. Raziel posed her question to Lilith, her tone reflecting no particular interest. Lilith had it spot on, though. Raziel was strikingly beautiful. She looked at us, her head cocked to the side. And that's when I noticed that Raziel wasn't indifferent or frigid. She was simply spacing out. We all step back, with only Setsuna, still holding Gethel's body, remaining at Raziel's side. Raziel grabbed hold of the very air around her, then pulled. And just like that, the entire thing, road included, came off with a creak. <gasps> Whoa. She gave the impossible to describe object a light touch. Guided by Raziel, it gently landed on the ground like a fallen leaf carried by the breeze. Through the hole left by the removed object, we could see the open skies. Setsuna lightly kicked himself into the air, leaping over to the outside of the world. We followed Setsuna inside the opening as anxiety made my heart race like a locomotive. And there I saw it. I laid eyes upon the outside of the world. That silly little phrase was all I could muster in my sheer amazement. I never knew the ocean would be vast, I really did. But as I beheld the massive body of water stretching out endlessly before my eyes, I, I couldn't even spot as much as a tiny speck of an island in the distance. Now I felt completely and thoroughly overwhelmed. Limitless skies and a boundless ocean. Those were the only things left in this world. The sky took on an eerie orange hue, resembling the hours of dusk, and although the ocean below reflected the light, its waves rolled about with a certain sinister blackness to them. I casually looked sideways. 
and this time I was left speechless, forgetting even to breathe how to phrase it. It was almost like a photo of the Tokyo Tower, red and white with a design many would consider to be a touch out of style. Yet standing in close proximity to its towering enormity would instill a fierce impression, leaving the specter overwhelmed in an awe. A colossal structure far beyond what my senses could possibly conceive. True, I was standing on the outside. At the very same time, though, I could very much perceive myself still being inside the structure. <laughs> Got that right. Certainly did, in fact. I considered dispatching a search team just to locate my jaw on the floor. And with that, Lilith handed me over to Raziel, who grabbed me by the nape like she was handling a kitty cat. Honestly, it was kind of scary. Both of us soon as thrown the outer walls of Tokyo Babel, their bodies slanting diagonally, mostly because the wall itself was slanting as well. Now, Setsuna signaled to Lilith in a disappointed tone. The latter stepped closer to Gethel's body, caressing her hair. Hints of pity and compassion swam across her features in turbulent waves. Um, okay, um, Gethel was a nice woman. Well, since I met her, she really wasn't nice at all, but I'm sure somewhere deep down, she had a, a hint. I, I can't do this, all right. So soon I turned to face me, his words dispelling the fear gnawing at my heart. I looked down at the lifeless body of my former sister, her features peaceful and somber like death. I had no memories of my past any longer. They were all gone without a trace, leaving nothing but vague concepts in their wake. The tears came without warning, much to my own surprise. After all, this was the very same girl who plotted to murder me. And if Setsuna hadn't come to my head when he did, Gathla would have carried through with that plan without a shred of doubt. And yet her death made me feel a bit sad. A sense of loss prickling my heart like a tiny needle. Setsuna let go of Gethel without uttering another word. Her body plummeted through the air in slow motion, heading slowly but surely towards the waves below. The law of inertia, on the other hand, propelled us ever onward. It seemed like the whole of Tokyo Babel was on its way somewhere. The soar in purgatory drifted farther and farther from Gethel's falling body until I had completely lost sight of her. これにて夜の魔女リリスの名において第一階層銀座解放を宣言する第一階層銀座の解放を確認おつ。Raziel casually slipped an oddly colloquial phrase into her report. そう。ところで一つ聞きたい。Raziel's gaze drifted in my direction. I immediately straightened myself and reflex. Raziel nodded, her fingers dancing on the surface of the tablet to check up on something. She then made me press a finger onto the, to its screen, never once letting her gaze leave my face. Razio innocently cocked her head to the side, producing the sort of expression that would kindle a fire most peculiar and indescribable in one's chest. I could call it cuteness, or a certain natural charm. Well, something along those lines, either way. By the way, I agreed with her assessment. Eh, to. Onamae. 
I held up. My name was Kagutsu Surami. Was it really, though? I mean, sure, I had a proper name and a life to call my own. But in the way I was now, I had nothing left. Nothing at all. Kugutsu Surami de Hitotsu Yoroshiku. Kugutsu Surami. Kako Karitoka Tsukete Oite Kredito Reshikamo. Shorai Homio Moidashta Kokina Dameni. Kako Kari. いいのソラミラジェルはよほどのことがない限り訂正を許可しないわよ。いけんね。ま、まあいいです。普段はソラミと呼んでくれれば了解。ソラミかっこかり。かっこかりは削ってください。ソラミかっこ笑い。Really? <笑> ラジエル彼女は空見と呼んでほしいそうだ了解じゃあクグツ空見どうか今後ともよろしくそしてお気の毒様お気の毒ですかまあ、I well, guess I did go through hell A total slaughterhouse I was thinking about it was making me feel a little depressed それじゃ学園に戻るとしますかそこで一休みして第二回戦について考えましょう学園そう東京バベルの人間たちが存在する最後の希望の学園私たちはパンドラと呼称しているわパンドラって霧写真はねあらゆる最悪と希望を丸
秒針を3に合わせて。Setsuna nodded and proceeded to follow Rezio's instructions in setting the clock tower's huge clock tower hands and the required positions. And just like that, the clock's massive faceplate opened with the heavy, emphatic sound of a railway coupler sliding free. Lilith leapt into the clock tower without bothering to wait for my response. It was pitch black inside. I tilted my head, but couldn't even make out the entrance I had just come through. All I could see was darkness in every direction. Then all of a sudden, I sensed Lilith descending. I felt the air pressure shift, but that was all. I began to question my own vision, unable to tell if I had my eyes open or closed, and that is until I came upon a bright luminescent spot. Was this how babies felt in their moments before birth? Or were they too busy shivering in fear at the thought of emerging into the cold, harsh reality to mind anything else? The world appeared to have come to a halt in temporary stasis, though it might have been all in slow motion. Eventually, I felt Lilith abruptly decelerating. Seconds later, I found myself in a confined, somewhat old fashioned room covered with linoleum flooring. In most schools, this would be like、uh, the night guard's office or the caretaker's room. Either way, the room gave off that kind of atmosphere. Or rather, that was precisely what it looked like. Oh, you got a PlayStation. Nice. Sasuna left the room without waiting to answer. I、uh, had nothing to change into, though. The piece of clothing she handed over was something I'd been intimately familiar with. Strikingly yellow in hue with black lines and a zipper. In short, I was staring at a tracksuit. They seem fixated on their preferred colors. Well, I would have been fine with anything, really. And still, if I had to choose from these three, I would have easily picked a yellow one. All I needed was a katana for the picture perfect image. I slipped out of my school uniform into the tracksuit. Having just done that, I was already feeling lighter. Lazier, send a call, nigga. Raziel took a little clothes with a nod, then directed her gaze at me. Safe. Oh, in this call? Raziel responded with another nod, prompting me to hand over my uniform. Ja, what up? Raziel then left the room in her stead. Satsuna appeared. Lilith filled a pair of teacups she had fished out from the cupboard with tea and offered them to me and Satsuna. Sa, nande nande. I blew on the tea a bit, then probably took a few sips, allowing the warmth of the hot, bitter, sweet liquid to sluggishly travel down my throat and into my stomach. I exhaled a sigh of relief. Finally, I didn't realize just how uneasy I had been up until this point. Lil sat down with teacup in hand, making herself comfortable on a cushion while flashing a cheeky smile. Yes, yes. So, let's just talk about it. And with that, Lilith, the Witch of the Night, set about telling a tale that would open my eyes to the truth of this world, the truth we will discover in the next episode. Take it easy, everybody.